my career and my passion really revolved around the idea of relationships and having very collaborative uh, work. And I think the research group that I was in when I was in Cairo Leuven really uh, reflected that symbolism of collaboration. So what I did find that would help me remind, would remind me of all of them was actually the PhD defense card that they gave me at the end of my PhD. I think if there's anything that symbolizes my career and passion would definitely be, um, that is connected to Kai Leuven, would be something like this, like something that brings all of us together. So on my first year of our PhD, everybody just broke up with their partners. It was really funny. Like in our research group, everybody just broke. I mean, I don't know why, but a lot of people were having this moment of they just broke up. And so we would always be, our research group would always be in the Libertad uh, for the music, the Tuesday music quiz. And then so we were thinking, you know what would be interesting? You know, let's do a speed dating study. And we worked on it together. It was a very st difficult statistical question because you know for our for our stats people like you have a longitudinal model where you have couples but the couples are not fixed they're moving so in that sense that adds a complexity so that was interesting statistically and for our our emotions people that's interesting because there's emotions happening in every date so you wanted to track that i think that study really will always be like memorable because that really shows to you like it was just, we just had fun doing research We're, and taking care of the resources of Kyle Leuven and making sure it's published. <laughs> I think the skills you get from the PhD is being independent. That's one. So the very much like finding solutions in the literature, finding creative ways to solve a problem, I think that's very much a PhD learning. I think being able to collaborate is very much, at least for my PhD, a very important part where you're able to, and also being able to communicate to the research community how relevant a scientific result is and why it has an impact to society and to your life. So for the funders and everything. So all of that, I would say, we're indeed building blocks to where to, to the work that I do now. So I'm uh, the head of the quality of life department at the European Organization for Research and Treatment of Cancer. So that's the EURTC. It's a nonprofit organization in Europe, based here in Brussels. And the primary mission of this organization is to conduct cancer clinical research in different European countries to improve the survival and the quality of life of cancer patients. That has always been the case in 60 years. So what we what happens is that we work with a network of universities and hospitals across Europe and beyond. If a clinician from, I don't know, UZ Leuven has a research idea where they want to run a clinical trial, you can come to the EURTC basically and then be part of a group and then they, they run the trial together with the EURTC helping you manage that. And part of my job as head of the department is to oversee all the quality of life activities of the EURTC and the EURTC network. It was a bit difficult because, as I said, suddenly there's like more structure. You know, you cannot just do a speed dating study in Libertad because you thought it would be great. Now you have to think, what is the vision of the organization how does your work align with the vision of the organization? And then like, and still make it interesting for you and for your team to make it work. The second thing I had to deal with, and that was about publications. The idea is that it's not about you anymore. It's about the organization and what you contribute to the organization. So if the EURTC name, for example, at least what I learned, is that if the EURTC name is part of a publication, that brings like, you know, um, visibility to your organization. And it's not about, like, you. It's, I mean, it's of course, it's you and your motivation, but you have to think bigger than yourself. When I was doing my postdoc, yeah, so I want... Things happened, life happened, and, like, you know, and you wanted to settle in Belgium. And then suddenly, 
the idea of finding opportunities for academic research became very limited to me. And then another thing I was thinking, if I'm going to stay in Belgium, then staying, having a very long postdoc makes you less attractive to outside of academia because you don't, you just don't have industry experience. So what I did was like when I got my postdoc, I did everything I said in my postdoc uh, for the first year. So, but at the same time, I was also already looking for other opportunities that could help bridge that gap between Leuven and finding a job in Belgium. And it's very hard as an international student, like, because you're like, um, uh, well, you don't speak fluent Dutch. That's one thing, especially if you're a psychologist. So clinical practice is out. So then you need to think of, okay, what am I going to do next? If you're an international student in a different country, it will always be potentially more difficult to find a job than a native just because, you know, they know more the system than you do. But that doesn't mean that it's not possible, I would say. Let me, because now I'm hiring. I'm on the other side, so I'm hiring. So I can say, so what happens is um, our PhDs, are taught that your publications are the most important thing ever. So you have to publish as much as you can. So then we receive CVs with like five pages of publications. You know, there's a lot of strengths in doing a PhD. And one of them is like, you know, if you're looking for a research job, writing skills, being able to think critically, you know, your, 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 your publications, having publications is good Writing them down in your CV is good if you're applying for research-oriented jobs that would need skills like that. So having that, but but you don't need 10. We just need to have a bit to know that you can do it. Um, I would also say that if you are not a perfect match to the job description, that's fine. But you have to at least show that you're close, you're, you can achieve those things in the future because of things that you have. I don't know how you can write that in a CV, but like those are the things that we are um, definitely like, uh, I would like to see actually, yeah. I would just say first, um, know what you're good at and that you're really interested in, you know, like something that, you know, it, not because you have to do it, but because, you know, you're curious about it. So know that, and then you look for a career that allows you to have some of that, at least in your job. It's really something you learn while you are searching for a job. But I think it's really, really important to know first what you want and what you can provide, what you can offer to the organization.